Hi, in this video, we are going to continue our discussion on how to write chapter 2, that's method of your quantitative research paper. So we have already discussed the other parts of um, met method or methodology. So um, we discussed how to write the research design, uh, research local, population in sample, and uh, the research instrument part of your uh, research paper. And we also discuss how to make your questionnaire or how to modify um, adapted questionnaires. So in this video, we are going to continue our discussion and that would be on the data collection part, um, statistical tools, and ethical considerations. Okay. So first, uh, these are the parts of your methodology, chapter 2 or method. So, we first had research design, research locale, population and sample, research instrument, and now we are going to discuss data collection after that, statistical tools, and the last part of your methodology is the ethical, ethical considerations. So, data collection. In this part, it presents how the study was done, from asking permission to conduct the study to the tabulation of the data in paragraph form. Remember, it should be in paragraph form. Hindi siya yung naka-enumerate lang. Okay? So, uh, basically, this tells your reader what happened, what you did before you, conduct, before you conducted the, the research, um, during the research process, and after the research process. Okay? So, all process or all problems exp or experiences encountered during the conduct of the study and how they were addressed should be narrated in this portion of your chapter 2. So, example, um, data collection, ayan, ganito siya, pagkasulat. So, it immediately follows right after the discussion on research instrument. Okay? So, the following were the data collection procedures followed during the conduct of the study. So, this serves as your intro statement for uh, data collection. May mga uh, omitted parts in this um, data collection in this paper kasi uh, dinilit ko siya um, kasi nung panahon na sinulat ko ito, hindi pa uso yung wala pang Data Privacy Act. Okay, so niligay pa yung uh, name ng school. So, uh, right now, since meron na tayong data privacy, so i-omit or i-remove na natin yung part na yun. Okay, so um, a permission letter to conduct, uh, a permission letter for the conduct of the study was sent to the school heads of the two private secondary schools concerned. So, ito naman magu. Um, ito naman talaga ang umpisa um, before you conduct your research study. So, manghihingi ka muna ng permeso. And that should be through a letter, a uh, letter to conduct your study. So, it should be sent or addressed to the heads of um, your location. Huh? Um, it could be school head for um, or school head or principal uh, for schools, di ba? For companies naman, um, head of the company, okay, the manager or the president and so on. The content of the letter was to ask permission to conduct a study regarding the relationship of school climate and mathematical dispositions of grade 10 students. So, andyan na, no? Ikaw anong, um, basically, ikaw ano yung title, ikaw ano yung topic ng study niya. So, upon the approval of the school heads, informed consent form, ICF, and a sent form were given to the participants asking them permission to be part of the study. So, itong ano, um, informed consent form, para siyang ano, waiver. Anong mangyayari? Ano dapat ang gawin nila? Ano yung mga rights nila? Okay? A sent form are given if your participants are below 18 years old. So, kailangan ito, no, child assent form. So, um, you have to give that to the participants. Um, to ask them permission to be part of the study. So, there were, ito ngayon, itong part na ito, it tells us the experience of, of uh, the, the researcher. So, ano yung na-experience niya or basically a challenge that was encountered by the researcher. So, there were few students who opted not to participate in the study. So, nevertheless, the researcher personally administered the questionnaire to the participants of the study to ensure 100% retrieval. 
So, eto nga yung deleted, removed um, na naman. Because um, in pandemic right now, so, hindi na siya applicable sa atin ngayon. So, diretsyo na tayo dito. Consequently, the data gathered were tallied. So, pagkatapos na ng conduct ng study, ano? pagkatapos na ng survey, so, ito ngayon ang nangyari. The data gathered were tallied, analyzed, and interpreted statistically. Finally, conclusions were drawn from the results which eventually gave way to the recommendation. So, basically, your data collection um, process starts with the permission and ends with the recommendations. Okay? Another example of how to present your data collection is this way. So, you can pause this video and read through the, this, uh, this paragraph. The next part of uh, the method or chapter 2 is uh, the statistical tools. It basically tells your reader the statistical tools that you used in interpreting the data. So, ito yung mga statistics na ginamit. So, in your case, um, di ba, correlation yun. So, basically, gagamit tayo ng test of correlation. So, person R. But before that, we need to determine first the level of the first variable and the level of the second variable separately. So, in that part, gagamit tayo ng mean. Kasi naka-Likert scale tayo. Likert scale. So, applicable yung mean. So, yung mean, this was used to determine the level of school media addiction. This basically is the first variable and your second variable. And then, sabi nyo, which part of the objective um, yung ma-address nito? So, which address the first and second research objective? So, kung mapapansin ninyo, yung first and uh, second uh, research objective natin, it's uh, determining the level of, yung first one, determining the level of variable one. Yung first two, determining the, to determine the level of variable two. Okay, so to answer those objectives, we need to use the mean. Okay, ang person R naman ginagamit siya to determine the, uh, the significance of the relationship, test of relationship na ito, correlation na. So this statistical tool was used to determine the significance of the relationship between your vari first variable and your second variable of the student's in answer to the third research objective. Okay? So, dapat um, may part na ganito. Ginamit, saan mo ginamit ito? Okay? Saan mo ginamit ito? Of course, uh, we use that to answer the third objective. And the third objective is to determine the significance of the relationship between the two variables. Okay? So, since hanggang correlation lang tayo, so, ito lang yung dalawang statistical tools na gagamitin natin. Last part is the ethical considerations. Ano ba yung dapat i-consider ng researchers, ng mga researchers in the conduct of the study? Okay, so babasahin natin ito uh, to let you know para, alamin na, para malaman natin kung ano dapat ang uh, paano at kung ano ang dapat i-consider upon the conduct of the study. Okay, so in the conduct of the study, the researchers assured that Appropriate research guidelines were followed and certain, certain research ethics were considered. Students' participation of the study was voluntary. This is very important. We do not force the students to be part of our study. Okay? So, their, their participation should be voluntary in which they could withdraw anytime. So, if they said, okay, okay, I will answer that survey. But in the lat later part, um, if uh, the participant says, the, the possible participant says, ay, hindi, hindi pala ako pwede, masakit ang chan ko. So, okay lang. So, it's okay to withdraw from um, participation um, in the survey. And there's no penalty on that. Okay? There's no pa penalty. Baka sabihin nyo, ay, sumbong tamo sa inyong advisor. Uh, baka bigyan kayo ng failing grade and so on, something like that. So, walang penalty yan. Okay? Um, any physical or emotional distress towards certain topics were also considered. So, kapag ka pagsabi ng participant, in the, halimbawa yung studyante, in the middle of answering the survey, sasabihin niya, parang naiiyak na ako dito, parang hindi ko, hindi ko kaya yung topic na ito. So, sabi, sasabihin niya ng participant, um, pwede bang uh, hindi ko nalang sagutan 
ang survey kasi masyado ako nagiging emotional sa items na na ito. So, pwede yun. It's okay. So, you have to consider that. You have to consider any physical or emotional distress towards centri- certain topics or items in your questionnaire. So, the researchers gave the respondents enough time. Okay? Hindi yung um, bigyan mo kaagad ng survey tapos in 10 minutes dapat sagutan na yan kasi deadline na. Okay? So, walang ganon. Ha? There should be enough time to answer the research questionnaire in order for them to actually think of their true insights. Kasi pag in a rush nyo yan, pag pinarush nyo, there's possibility na sige, pataka na lang. O kahit ano na lang, hindi na babasahin yung items. Okay? And uh, information of the participants were made confidential. This is very important. Okay? Uh, once you have the information in the questionnaire in hand, um, hindi nyo pwedeng screenshot yan or hindi nyo pwedeng email day yan sa Facebook or sa Messenger. Okay? So, that should be confidential to ensure privacy of their data. Okay? Kay- kayo rin naman mananagot yan. Okay? So, in line with Republic Act 10.173 or also known as the Data Privacy Act of 2012, the name of the school where um, the name of the school where the study was conducted was not revealed. Okay, so this is very important. That is why uh, sa scope and delimitation at saka sa research local, yung sa population and sample, dapat hindi natin i-mention, at saka sa data collection, hindi natin i-mention yung pangalan ng school. Okay? So, dapat hindi i-mention yan for data privacy um, purposes. Ano pa ba? Yung uh, identities ng participants and the participants' identities were classified in order to keep their anon- anonymity. So, um, yung identities ng participants dapat anonymous yan. Okay? So, hindi natin kailangan kung malaman kung anong pangalan nila, di ba? So, optional. If they, if they write their first name, it's okay. But we, do not, we don't need to show uh, those data, those information, in your research paper. Okay? Proper salutation of other authors used in the study were cited in APA referencing classification or referencing style. So, proper salutation tayo. So, dapat uh, yung mga works na ng other researchers na nabanggit ninyo sa research paper, there should be, they should be cited properly. Okay? In APA format. So, yung uh, citation natin um, sa uh, RRL natin or sa chapter 1 um, last name last name ng author and then year of publication and then aside from that meron din tayong references okay so at the end of the paper after ng chapter 4 yung chapter 4 is the discussion of the results okay after that um, yung references na natin. And so, this uh, referencing style should follow the APA format. So, lahat ng na-cite nyo dun sa chapter 1, sa chapter 2, chapter 3, uh, they should appear in the references. Okay? So, the researchers did not make up any data. This is very important. So, um, halimbawa, ang, ang participant, sumagot siya sa research Sa, sa survey ninyo, halimbawa 15 items, tapos may isa o dalawang items doon na hindi niya sinagutan. And so, that becomes invalid. So, hindi niya na isasali yan. So, for you, sasabihin niyo na, hala, kulang na, kulang na, dili na maabot o uh, required sample ang, ang data if i-remove niyo yun. So, ang gagawin niyo, um, Ang gagawin nyo ngayon, baka lang, ha? So, ay sige, nguna, anitinganin na, butangan-butangan, lalagyan na lang natin yan ng kahit na ano. Mm. And so, that's making up data. Okay? So, that should not be done by a researcher. Okay? So, kung may mga items doon na hindi nasagutan, i-remove nyo yun. I-remove, so hindi nakasali. So, that is why when you conduct your study, um, dapat more than your samples. Okay? Kasi hindi maiiwasan. May mga items talaga na mali left out ng, ng participant. And hindi na siya valid. Doon kasi magzi-zero siya sa isang item or magbablank. 
and plagiarism were avoided. So, dapat walang plagiarism. Lahat ng sinabi, lahat ng sinait, lahat ng menention sa research paper ninyo na hindi, hindi inyo, you, uh, that should be cited. And that should be included in the references. Of course, doon sa APA referencing um, style. Okay? At saka, um, yung... Um, Yung pagka-restate nyo or uh, dun sa kinuha yung thought or thesis uh, na sinali nyo dun sa, sa research paper ninyo, um, as much as possible, i-rephrase ninyo ha. I-rephrase, i-restate, iwasan ninyo yung um, quotation marks and then nakasite talaga dapat. Okay, andun yung last name ng author at saka year of publication. And kasali siya sa references. Therefore, eto ngayon, therefore, the ethical aspect of research was strictly followed all throughout the conduct of the study. Okay? So, dapat, yung mga na-mention natin kanina, yun dapat i-consider ninyo as researchers. Okay? So, those are the ethical considerations. Okay, so, kayo naman, when you do your ethical consideration part, sa part ng paper ninyo, so, Dapat, nandun yung mga dapat i-consider as researchers. So, andun yung mga key points. Uh, so, you have to state it your, with your own words. Okay? So, hindi naman copy-paste lang ito lahat. Ha? Hindi naman copy-paste. Ang importante, andun yung mga, yung mga uh, dapat i-consider ng isang um, researchers um, for uh, the ethics, no? sa research ethics. So, ayan, i-rephrase, wag i-copy-paste, lahat-lahat. So, state it with your own, using your own words. Or hindi naman sa, when I say you use your own words, uh, dun sa pagkasabi. But, um, yung sa mga, um, anong tawag dito, yung mga importante na words, hindi naman ibig sabihin na, uh, hindi naman maghahanap lang kayo ng synonyms, no? <laughs> Gagamit lang ng thesaurus. Halimbawa, yung word na vol voluntary, um, papalitan lang ng ibang words. No? Hindi naman ganun ang pag-restate at saka rephrase. So, andun pa rin ang thought, the same ang meaning, tapos ibang, ibang paraan lang yung pagkasabi. Okay? Ibang paraan, hindi ibang words ang ginamit. 